from TastePC.tv and in this video I'm going to be putting together a Sony Passive Gaming PC. Now I actually started filming this video over two months ago now and I've had the build footage filmed, edited and voiceovered since then, which is the reason why this video does feature the Strix 780 because at the time it was a fairly new card. But now that the 970 and 980 have come out I just thought it would be the perfect time to get everything configured to try them out on a Sony Passive PC and see how they compare. This video would be kind of more of an experiment, just you know, given that we've already got so many passive parts like power supplies and more recently graphics cards, and we've got the ability to manage our CPU in case fans and get them to run at zero RPM, and you know, you've got you've got like options to go for silent solid set drives rather than loud hard drives. I just thought it'd be interesting, given all of those things, to see if it'd be possible to make a rig that was completely silent whilst it was idling, browsing the web, watching videos, and even like gaming. But when you needed the power to be able to play like a heavy game or heavy load game on its highest settings or to render a video in reasonable time, you'd have like decent enough specs and low enough temps to be able to do so. The other reason why I want to stay in passive rig is because I want to bring my PC and kind of my desk back into the lounge rather than where it is in my bedroom at the moment, which means that while I'm filming I need the fans to not be spinning so the microphone doesn't pick it up because I do talk very quietly so it will be kind of over my voice. Um, but then, you know, when, once I've got the take, I want the rig to already be on, Vegas to already be open, and for me to be able to just edit as I go. And then, you know, once the video's finished, for me to, for it to have the power to just, you know, render the video in a reasonable amount of time. So while usually a rig with just quiet fans running at a low RPM would do the job, I really need it to be silent for when I'm recording. So I'm going to start with the 780, and then once I've tried that, switch for the 917, 980, and in future I can always tweak it more if I need to. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Lauren from two months ago. So the first part that I'm going to be using for the build is an Intel Devil's Canyon i7-4790K, as it's supposed to have better heat transfer between the IHS and the die than my i7-4770K, meaning that it should run cooler and therefore be better for the passive side of the build, but also given that it comes clocked at 4.0GHz and it's supposed to be very overclockable, it will be great for kind of like the gaming side of the build and I just need a bit of extra power. But I am going to be experimenting with overclocking and also undervolting in this video. So then for the board, I'm going to be using an Asus Republic of Gamers Z97 Maxima 7 Hero, so that I can use the Turbo App software in AI Suite to switch between the different overclocking profiles depending on what application it's running. So if I'm browsing the web, then I can have the CPU undervolted, whereas if I'm gaming, I can have it overclocked to its highest stable overclock. And I can also use either the ROG BIOS or the Fan Expert software to make the build passive whenever possible. Then with the case, so I'm going to be using a Corsair Graphite 730T, and the reason why I went specifically for this case is because it's pretty big and well ventilated. And even though usually I hate ventilation like this in cases, because it kind of affects the airflow that I was hoping to achieve with my fan placement, in a passive build it's kind of essential to keeping it passive for as long as possible so that heat can rise out of the case and away from the components. Um, it would have been better I suppose if the whole side panel had been grilled, but at least with this case it's really easy to just open the door and run it like a test bench if needed. Then for the power supply I'm using an AX1200i, which is an 80 plus platinum semi-passive PSU. As it's semi-passive, the fan isn't supposed to turn on if the power supply is under 30% of its total load, so 360 watts. And hopefully this rig should require just under that, so therefore the fan should never turn on and I'll essentially have a silent power supply, which is perfect for this build. I fit it in the floor, fan face up, so that the heat can easily rise out of it. For storage, I'm going to be using solid state drive for obvious reasons. This one only is 120 gig, but I can obviously add more if I run out of space. For that reason, I have removed all of the hard drive cages in the case, so I imagine the finished build might look a little bit empty, but it will be area for it. So next we've got the memory, and usually I don't fit this until right near the end of the build. However, because of the CPU cooler that I'm planning on fitting, as I'm planning on fitting it horizontally rather than vertically, I need to fit the memory first, and it needs to be low profile memory. So for that reason I'm using 16 gig of 1600MHz Corsair Vengeance Black low profile memory, which is the best low profile kit that I've got. It does only run at 1.5 volts though, so it should help with the heat in that area. So then onto the cooling, now for the fans, I'm going to be using Noctua's new industrial black PPC fans. While I probably should have used the Sunlit FF12s over these, as they are quieter, I just could not use these given how sexy they are. But I've two 140s in taking the front, a 120 in taking in the floor, and a 140 in taking in the rear, meaning that all four fans in this case are in taking. I then decided against putting any fans in the roof, because even though then I won't have any fans exhausting, it will mean that when the build is passive, the hot air will be able to escape through the ventilation in the top. Then for the cooler, I'm going to be using a Noctua and HD15, fit horizontally rather than vertically as I said before, so that hopefully when it's passive, the air will more quickly rise up and away from the fins. 
With this, I fit one fan, which is blowing air upwards. Um, I was originally planning on using a redux fan with this, just because I thought it would fit the whole colour scheme better, however it never arrived in time. But I do hope the Nox will make kind of like an uh, industrial version of the NHD15 one day, I think that would look really good and sell really well. Um, but all the fans are on low noise adapters and then plugged directly into the motherboard's case fan headers so that I can hopefully get them to stop spinning completely if the temps are low enough. And then finally for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the new Asus Strix, which is a 6 gig Sony passive GPU. Basically meaning that if the GPU is at a low enough temp, the fan won't spin at all and it will be completely silent, which is obviously perfect for this build. Also, it's got 6 gig of VRAM, which is great because I've noticed recently in quite a few games that they've wanted more than 3 gig at 1080p. So nowadays, if I was going to be buying a high-end GPU, it'd definitely have to be for a 4 gig AMD or a 6 gig NVIDIA one. I will be talking more about this card's passive cooling later in the video though, because at the moment I don't know how much it relies um, on the rest of the case having good airflow, when obviously when I'm trying to have it passive, the rest of the case won't have any airflow at all. Thank you Lauren from two months ago. <laughs> so firstly I'm just going to leave the clock, volts and everything else in default, except for the memory which I'm going to set to 1600MHz, just because I want to see you know, how everything's running at stock. And as we can see, that while the system's idling, it will run at 0.799 GHz at 0.737 volts. And then with the system stress testing, it will run at 4.4 GHz at 1.243 volts. Which gives me my voltage limits, as I don't really want to go any higher than that. And ideally, it'd be great if I could actually go lower than that with the V-Core. So I'm now back in the BIOS, and I'm going to change the overclock to 4.5 GHz, which is only a tiny overclock, but I don't really want to push it any further than that, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a same passive rig and not like an overclock beast. And then also what I'm going to do is change the V-Core to offset mode, but leave the offset in auto, and then that should allow the volts to stay nice and low whilst the system's idling. But you could, of course, tweak further on this if you wished. But back in Windows, we can see that whilst idling, the volts are now at 0.708 rather than 0.737. And during stress testing at 4.5 GHz, the volts are now only at 1.219 rather than 1.243. So not only is it running at a higher clock, it's doing it at lower volts, which is great. Um, and as you can see, so far it's been stress testing for two hours and it's been completely stable. So now that I'm happy with the clock and volts, it's time for me to configure the CPU and case fans, and for this I'm using Fan Expert 3 in AI Suite. I should mention that I did have to remove all the low noise adapters off the fans, as it was causing an issue where the fans would fail to spin and just make a ticking noise. So I have already named all of the fans across the top here, as you can see, just to make it easier to tell which one is which. But starting with the CPU fan, now what I really wanted to do here was have it stay completely off until the temps hit around 60 degrees Celsius and then have it on a gentle curve up from 60 to 100 degrees. However, AI Suite does limit you to having the fan run at 100% load once it gets to 75 degrees Celsius, which is really annoying because it means, you know, this is all I can do. Um, but I am going to reduce the delay on this fan spin up time to zero as I want it to be instant and I'm also going to increase the fan spin down time to 25 seconds so that you know when the CPU is floating around 75 degrees celsius it won't just like turn on for five seconds and turn off again for five seconds, turn back on for five seconds etc. Um, then with the case fans once again at 75 degrees celsius they're going to ramp up to 100% rpm which does really suck especially given that they're industrial server grade NFF12s and you know even on the lowest rpm are powerful enough to bring the temps well below 65 degrees celsius so I never actually intended or you know wanted any of the case fans to hit 100% rpm at any point and this is really overkill to the point where it's like the fire brigade turning up every time you burn your toast. Um, but yeah, so as I want the fans to turn on at intervals of 5 degrees Celsius, the front and bottom fans I've got coming on at 70 degrees C, and then the rear fan at 75 degrees C, and you know, this is all I could do. So this really is an ideal solution, and I wouldn't particularly recommend it for a same passive PC, so I do really hope that Asus eventually release an update that will give me full control of my fans. But anyway, now that I've got everything set up, let's see how things run. So the first test that I ran was to see if the system was say completely passive whilst I was just browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, just generally using the PC but nothing that would really stress the CPU. And the rig did stay completely passive for over two hours, at which point I decided to stop the test. Now a hardware monitor did say that one of the cores has spiked up to a max of 70 degrees, however AI Suite never said the temps went above 57 degrees, which is why none of the fans came on because obviously AI Suite never registered the temps as hitting 65 degrees Celsius. But it probably does mean that, um, you know, as the temps slowly creep up, eventually the CPU fan will come on for like a minute, but then you'll just get another couple of hours of it being passive again. 
So the next thing was for me to test what the rig was like whilst light gaming. And for this I chose Minecraft, which I'd never actually played before this point because I didn't really like how you couldn't see much, but the game is very fun and extremely addictive and I ended up running this test for 12 hours rather than two. But that was um, me just being thorough and oh, <laughs> Yes, Farah. So, yeah. Um, as you can see from the extremely sped up two hours of footage that I did record, the rig stayed completely passive with none of the fans turning on at all, including the graphics cards fans, which, while I know that Minecraft isn't the most taxing of games, I was really expecting the fans to come on at least intermittently, which I think is quite impressive given this build is using an i7. And then finally I wanted to test the rig whilst heavy gaming, and for this I used Metro Last Light on high settings. With heavy gaming, I did expect all the fans to come on, which, you know, is what I intended it to do under load, so with this I really decided just to focus on temps, fan RPG and average frame rate for these tests. Although I have to say with these tests, regardless of what GPU I was using, the case fans did not come on at any point. Um, only the CPU and GPU fans started spinning, which was really a lot better than I was expecting. But starting with the Strix 780, it averaged 72.7 FPS, the CPU hit a max temp of 82 degrees Celsius, the GPU hit a max temp of 79 degrees Celsius, and the graphics card fans were never at more than 52% RPM. With the GTX 970, for this it averaged 76.4 FPS, the CPU hit a max temp of 83 degrees, the GPU hit a max temp of 69 degrees, and the GPU fans never went above 42%. And then finally with the 980, it averaged 88.3 FPS, the CPU hit a max temp of 81 degrees, the GPU hit a max temp of 72 degrees, and the GPU fans never went above 48%. So looking at these results, you can see that with the default fan curves that these three cards ship with, the, the older 780 Strix requires more cooling than the 970 and 980 to maintain similar temp. So unless you come across like a really epic deal on the 780, I'd obviously recommend opting for the newer cards in a same passive build. So you can clear my thoughts on the build, what I wanted was a rig that stayed completely silent unless I was gaming or doing something to really push it. And after a couple of days of using it, I can determine that it does exactly that. It will stay completely silent whilst systems idling, whilst browsing the web, replying to emails, watching videos, using the camera software, um, and you know, even like gaming, which is exactly what I wanted. There are a few issues though that I need to iron out, the first of which is that I do notice some kind of like coil whine or electrical noise, which as it's not particularly loud, if the rest of the rig wasn't passive, you might not be able to hear it, but as it is, you can, so that is quite annoying. Um, I haven't really been able to isolate what part it is coming from though yet because it's quite echoey inside the case like I don't really know if it's coming from the graphics card or a power supply on the motherboard um, I have to say though I did notice it was louder with the 970 and the 980 than it was with the 780 um, I still can't really say what kind of percentage of the coil wine they make up um, but I will definitely test it and be able to give kind of like a definitive answer in my review of the 917 and the 980 because I have had a lot of people ask me do the Strix cards have bad coil wine. Um, so the second issue is obviously AI suite locking it so the fans have to run 100% RPM when the temp sits 75 degrees Celsius which given the fans that I'm using <laughs> is pretty annoying um, and then the third issue well it's not really issue because the case fans rarely ever actually spin but uh, the fact that I've chosen to use industrial server grade fans in a same passive PC. Um, I just, I really couldn't help it, they're just so sexy and black, but it was definitely a case for going for looks over common sense, and in future builds I will be more sensible. Um, but yeah, so I'm really happy with the rig, it did a lot better than I was expecting, and I'm, ha I'm particularly happy with the Strix cards, while, you know, light gaming they stay completely passive, and when the temps do start to creep up a little bit, the fans will spin at such low RPM that it's barely audible, and, you know, sometimes only one of the fans will spin, while the other one stays at zero RPM, um, which is cool. But when the temps do properly ramp up, they are some of the quietest cards that I've used. So yeah, I've got myself a little same passive gaming PC here, um, well I suppose it's not really little. I can see them becoming a lot more common in future though as, you know, new tech comes out and, you know, especially as we're seeing parts like the Silverstone TDO4 pumpless liquid cooler. But I'd love to know in the comments below what you think of the build and what you would do differently if you're going to be doing your own same passive rig. If you like the video, hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. And thanks for watching.